Hello, is this thing on? Hi, I'm Darcy and I am a knitter, podcaster, a speech pathologist, a wife, a cat and dog mom, and a knitwear designer. And I'm based out of St. Louis, Missouri, and this is my 16th podcast episode. And wow, wow. we have finally made it. We've made it to the promised land to the promised land of monetizing on YouTube. And I just want to thank everyone. If you are new, thank you for joining. Thank you for giving my podcast a try. If you have been rocking with me for a while, I really appreciate you. And I'm just so grateful for the community of people who help me make decisions on my knitting stuff and just share your knitting time with me. I really want to say thank you and uh, I am going to do a giveaway in my next podcast episode so please make sure to like and subscribe so that um, my channel can keep growing and I can keep making content for you guys and also I can keep paying my bills <laughs> because I'm hoping that this will become a way that I can actually make some money so thank you now let's get down to it. Today is October 1st, 2023. It is a Sunday. And so far, I've already been to one of my other side hustles, which was actually right here in my living room, where I have a home salon and I do interlocks. So that's like the hairstyle, like my my locks. So I do this style on other people and I had an appointment this morning. So I've already done that today. And after I leave you good people on the podcast, I'll be going to my aunt's house where we're going to have like a family dinner on Sunday. And yeah, I'll just get to catch up with some of my family. I'm actually going on a trip tomorrow. So I'll be away from Artie for a few days and I need to pack still. And I'm going to have to decide the tough decision of which knitting projects to bring. So yeah, I got that ahead of me today so let's get started with what i'm wearing i have on my outline raglan and this is a size inclusive pattern from jesse may and it is a top down raglan pattern with an open work uh drop stitch along the body and i'll just get up so you can see a little more it has the drop stitch on the front and the back. And I've knit it with some extra long sleeves in my, uh, this color is called Wild Horses. And uh, it is a yarn from Trailhead Yarn Company. And the yarn is about half cotton, half linen. I talk about this a lot in previous episodes as I was working on it. So go check those out if you have not heard me talk extensively about this. This is probably my second time wearing it. And what I notice about this one, this is my second one I've made, is for some reason, I'm gonna just turn my chair to the side. The back, the back is really, is really short. And I don't know why exactly that happened. It could be because I followed the short row instructions pretty loosely and I'm the villain and that's what happened yep so I don't mind it I am wearing this with a nude color bra underneath just so that it you know kind of blends in and then I just wear it with the with nothing else under it's pretty warm here in St. Louis. It's in the upper 80s. And October 1st, we typically don't have that type of weather. So everybody is just kind of soaking in the last crumbles of summer because next week the weather's gonna change. It's gonna get pretty uh, cold pretty quick. So I haven't had many chances to wear this but I'm hoping there's gonna be a little more fall before we go directly to winter. You never know. And they say in St. Louis, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. So that we will do. This is something I finished recently. 
and I will go from here right into my finished objects. I have my notes here right in front of the camera and the first finished object I'm going to show you I've been working on. It's been kind of tumultuous because I misplaced the project several times and it is the koi turtle. It's a turtleneck raglan cropped negative ease turtleneck and I've made mine with long sleeves and this pattern I mean it just looks so good on this yarn is seismic butter worsted and it's called butter with good reason because it is so buttery and this is especially if you're the type of person who likes ultra soft on the neck if your neck is very sensitive this would be a great yarn to use for this project um it was not gifted i bought this yarn with my own money because it is just that good i originally purchased uh five and i have this much left i did weigh my finished project and this is 361 grams so this is just under four skeins in the number size uh c is the one that i meant yes size c and this is the pattern and this pattern when it came out i just had to have it and ijama and i my bestie uh we knit this project together and hopefully we'll be able to wear them together now that we both finished them and we're moving on to another project together which i'll talk about later in the episode but this pattern especially i've been seeing a lot of stuff on instagram recently about size inclusivity and i'm gonna just say it because i don't know her and i really don't feel like i owe her anything petite knit um has been getting a lot of flack as she has gotten forever for not having size inclusive patterns and Instead of telling y'all so much about what Petite Knit is not doing, I'm gonna just tell y'all about the patterns that I'm knitting that are size inclusive. And I, don't quote me on this, but I think just about every single pattern, uh, garment pattern that I make is size inclusive, but I'm gonna go a little bit harder to verify that. I know for a fact that this pattern and this pattern are size inclusive. And the excellent thing that I, had just wrote about on an Instagram post about this pattern is that Autumn, the designer of the Koi Turtle, she has taken the pain out of even selecting the correct pattern and annotating it all the way through. So for example, her patterns go up to, um, I'm gonna have to put it on the screen how many sizes there are what the size range is but in the pattern file when you download it you get several files and you only have four sizes at a time in each file so when you choose your pattern what what letter you're going to make then you are only looking at four possible options at a time see what i'm saying and that was something i never felt like i needed but it is extremely helpful when you're knitting a pattern and there's you know 16 sizes or there's 10 sizes even just to make sure that you're getting your right stitch count every time you should go through and annotate but even going through to annotate it's easier when there's only four size options per document so you get all of the sizes when you buy the pattern but each file has divvied them up so that she's divvied them up in each file so you don't have to sort through as much while you're making so that's another great thing about this koi turtle pattern i would highly recommend this pattern i'm not sure exactly how much it is i think maybe like nine or ten dollars and totally worth it i'm probably gonna make some more of these because i loved wearing this i love how um how the fit is and i have just about maybe one or two inches of negative ease on mine and it's just incredible the color on this is a 
smoky gray with purple speckles and some very faint hot pink fuchsia type speckles so one other quirk about this that i did and you you probably wouldn't be able to tell unless i told you but after i finished the first sleeve i put it down and then the next day i came back to do the second sleeve well when i picked up the second sleeve i accidentally grabbed the wrong needle so the gauge on the second sleeve is a lot tighter because i was using a smaller needle but i'm not going to undo it or anything and i'll show some pictures of how it looks wearing it just so you can see it on me i'll probably wear it for a podcast episode one day when it is cold enough to wear something like this indoors but for right now just gonna have to hold it up to show you so i still have quite a bit of this left and i am considering making a baby version of this project I'm just trying to adapt it a little bit to make it a baby version because i'm planning my family i'm not pregnant but i am planning to add you know a person eventually to our family and they are gonna need obviously a super fly knit wardrobe and i i can't just wait until they're already here to start because i'm gonna be behind so i think doing at least i would do a, a matching like hat just so that we can you know style it together but i have enough for maybe a small baby sweater i think especially if i did like the the tin can knits um is it called flax or barley those are uh free sweater patterns that are like for the whole family but each one is a different grain name and has a different weight yarn assigned to it so i gotta go back and look but this is a very loose plan right now because as you can see i haven't cast on anything so that's in the plan though um also with the family plan oh let me tell y'all it has been such a headache trying to find contractors to do work on our house so i'm a speech therapist Artie is an occupational therapist neither of us are masons or bricklayers or drywallers or painters and we've come to the point in our uh home ownership of three years that we need to get professionals to do these things because it just isn't going to be the same if I do it. I know I could, I, I could DIY, you know, and I see y'all out here thugging it out, you know, doing these projects yourself. And I commend that, but I just don't want it to look like I did it. So I'm going to get the, the pros, but even evaluating the pros is very tough so you know home uh contractor vetting you know tips or if you're in the st louis area and you have a great contractor like leave me a comment let me know uh put me on because we are we're working on converting a our sunroom into a nursery and we're gonna have to replace all the windows so right now we're just doing all the bids with the windows and it's just like an extra homework assignment to have to get the the appointments and wait for the people to come and then they gotta look at it and then they're trying to sell you and then they're trying to scam you and then they're you know it just it's exhausting so any tips pro tips we will take those so yeah anyway that was my baby rant i also wrote down one note about knitting this pattern so i actually did this mistake on my koi t which is the t-shirt version of this pattern i'm gonna go get that so i can show you the mistake so you don't have to make it i'm back so this is the koi t and this is another pattern by ginkgo b the same designer as the koi turtle and in both patterns there's an instruction to work a ribbed uh raglan and i really like that aspect of the pattern but for some reason on this project and on the turtleneck project i got the count wrong somehow after the ribbing 
and it gives specific instructions about when to knit, when to purl. It doesn't have instructions like work in pattern, right? So the first time I was doing it, I was like, I'm gonna just follow this exactly how it is. Now I didn't know that my stitch count was off. And then that put off all of the stitches when I transitioned from ribbing to stockinette. So you can see here how these stitches go from purl, oh, sorry, go from rib uh, knit to purl. And this goes from purl into knit. Now that's because I wasn't doing it right. And I would caution you when you're following that aspect of the pattern to work in the pattern rather than work like as the stitches are assigned in the pattern, just in case your stitch count is wrong or there's one off or something. So I did that with this pattern and look how much neater that is. Just going from the turtleneck right down through that ribbing, you know, it's absolutely seamless. It, you know, it just doesn't have that mistake. So, watch out for that. Next on my notes is my... Oh, 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 oh. So, next on my notes is... My sock pattern that I've been working on for several years um right now i work as a speech therapist at a elementary and middle school but when i was working in uh, my previous job was at a high school and i had so many iep meetings and i don't know where you are if this happens but um speech therapists where i was trained in new york uh, don't case manage um, IEPs. IEPs are individual educate, individualized education plans and they're legal documents that um, essentially spell out what strengths and weaknesses students have that need an individualized education plan to help them access the curriculum of the school. So that's made to work collaboratively with everybody who's on their team to get them the best education they can get. Those meetings are extremely long and usually they go like a, at least an hour, hour and a half. And me as the case manager, as I was, I have to be present taking notes during this whole meeting. So uh, I also case managed 13 students. So I was responsible for writing 13 of these. And then I was also on the team for like an additional 30 students. So I spent a lot of time in these meetings and the meetings that I wasn't the chair of is more listening than talking. So I had a lot of time to knit. And I worked on these socks that are, the yarn is Habari Land and the color is Unicorn Taco. And I finished one while I still had that job, but the other one I've been working on slowly but surely to finish. It's a self-striping yarn and I didn't put any heels in because I want to do the afterthought heel and I'm gonna I haven't done that before ever but I figured it would be easier to do the afterthought heel and I could kind of pull out some of the colors to decide what the heel color was gonna be and where I was gonna cut it in so I still have quite a bit left certainly enough for two heels but I was thinking maybe I'll do one heel purple and one heel green or I don't think the white would be practical on the heels because that's gonna get dirty you know so I had this is kind of in between and I'll I'll put the sock on so y'all can see it but I'm almost tempted to not put in heels but then I'm like socks need heels like why would I not put a heel so it just is kind of straight right now, like the hospital socks where you have the, you know, the, the don't slip and falls on the bottom. Eh, it's giving hospital sock right now. I'm going to have to put the heel in, but this is semi finished because I've done most of the knitting. I just need to do the heels. So I just wanted to update 
everyone on this project. This was kind of a long lost project. It was hibernating for quite some time and it's going to have its day in the sun again. I'm going to work on these once that little crispy chill comes back in the air. It was here for a little bit, but then, like I said, summer had came back. So I'm going to put this back away, but that is the progress I've made. And I'm looking forward to trying to do a new technique because that's the beauty of knitting like as long as you've been knitting like there's still always going to be new stuff for you to try so i'm a very accomplished sock knitter but i haven't ever tried that technique so i'm trying to open myself up to some new possibilities perhaps i'll find that this is the best way to make socks the way that i have been doing before was just a vanilla sock from a uh, cuff to toe and doing a gusset heel gusset and flap and I really like that method, uh, but how could I know that I like that one the best if I don't try other stuff, so. Next on my list is the Oceanside sweater. Now, I haven't done a whole lot. I ended the podcast with this project the last time, but I'm gonna show you what I've got done so far. I seamed one of the shoulders together and you can see it has a nice um, union where the stripes align. And I'm planning to just continue uh, sewing in the ends and seam this other shoulder. Then I'm gonna add on the collar and then I'm gonna work with great caution on the way I'm trying to reverse engineer these sleeves on. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, check out my last episode where I was showing this um, pattern and just what exactly I've done so far on it. The yarn, the main colors is uh, a Lola Bean yarn, a Passion Knits yarn, and a Naima Bond Sister Nance yarn. And they create that blue stripe effect that's like the main. And then all the others are just mini skeins that I had along my, my way. Things I picked up along like advent calendars and um, just special projects or, you know, you get a free mini if you buy sweater quantity of yarn, you know, so stuff like that, that I added up. So this is going to be finished. I'm not abandoning it. I haven't lost hope. Uh, but it is a bit, the word is, um, it just is, requires a lot of focus and attention and it's not footloose, fancy free knitting. It's, I need to focus and make sure that all of the lines are exactly aligned. This is more of like a type A when I'm in a type A mood then I work on this and I get that satisfaction of lining everything up and getting everything in order. But I just haven't been needing to scratch that itch. I've just been needing to knit to knit. So I'm going to keep going with my, my progress and it's still living in my trusty basket with all of the yarns that go along with it. One thing I wanted to say about this project is I took the the pattern from the magazine and I actually use my notes app on my iPhone to scan the text of the pattern into a note so that I could enlarge the font and have all of the see how tiny this is this is so small three columns and this has got to be like 10 8 it's definitely not 12, which is what, at mine is actually probably like 14, the size that I printed on um, my paper. So I just scanned all of the parts, then put them in the notes app and then printed from the notes app so that I could have it aside and then I don't have to ruin my magazine and I can annotate and make notes. So that was just a tip. I don't know if you thought of that, 
uh, but if you like to knit from magazines like Pom Pom or, you know, any of the knitting magazines, then you might like that tip. So my next whip, this one has been, it actually was lost for a little bit and it got shoved underneath my, you can see there, my, uh, my yarn hatch, hutch. I guess it would be called, I don't know if it's technically a hutch. I don't really know furniture vocabulary very well, but this uh, cabinet, it was underneath there in the project bag and it just kind of got forgotten about, I'm, I'm gonna say it. In the year 2022, I declared that that was the year of starting what I finished and I really meant that. And this is the only lingering project from 2021 that I had not finished. And it's time to circle back and actually get down to the nitty gritty because this is a beautiful pattern, beautiful yarn, just very unfortunate that I have such an aversion to purling. But I think I've solved that and I'm ready to tackle it and give it another try. So. This pattern is the Cleo Cardi by Rachel Kuihara. And this is a well-written pattern. It is, let me tell you how, uh, let me tell you, first let me tell you if it's size inclusive. I'll tell you about that. Okay, this uh, garment bust circumference goes up to 68 inches. Now, I won't say whether or not that's size inclusive because I don't really know what each person's definition of size inclusive is, but that's a lot of sizes. It has, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sizes, and the smallest size is 36 and the largest size is 68. So this is a size inclusive pattern. Uh, and I bought this on Etsy from Rachel Kuihara and I actually made a reel about this. Aversion to purling, but I think now I could actually steek from the point that I'm at and then that would eliminate my purling but I made a decision to try to just proceed with garter stitch because that is how averse I was to the purling and I'm going to show you what happened so along the edge we've got a nice uh collar and you knit the collar on as you make the sweater. And I got to the sleeve separation. And the sleeve separation is right here. And you can see where I went wrong. You can see right there just how wrong it went. This pattern wasn't meant to be garter stitch. It wasn't meant to be, and I was trying to force it. I was trying to force my will on the yarn. And, you know, my friend Felicia over at the Felina Knits podcast, she has a saying where she says that the yarn is going to tell you what it wants to be. And, whoo, I felt that. I felt that the yarn was telling me, no, 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 don't do this. And this is a beautiful yarn that I love this color. This is called Wild Berries. Let me make sure I'm telling y'all. Make sure I'm not lying. Of course, I don't have it. I don't have the tag in in here. The the tag is not in here. Is it in here? No, it's not in here either. Okay, but I know I have another one. Just bear with me. This is a DK weight of this yarn, but just on the tag so I can tell you. It's called Wild Berries and Cream. And this is a yarn from Black Smoke Fibers. And this was a yarn that I had sold through Fiber and Color, which was my yarn subscription business, which I'm actually toying with the idea of bringing that back. But I have so many irons in the fire. 
it would just be like very occasional, maybe like one club or, you know, like a make along once a year type of thing. So I'll talk more about that if I can, if I can even bring that back to life. But I have this color and when I was doing it, I really had committed myself to making a project in each um, each yarn that I was selling. And I made a hat with this um, yarn that I really like and use when it's the appropriate weather. But I wanted a garment and I don't have, I have one cardigan that I've knit, but this was gonna be my second cardigan. This is how I was gonna break into the cardigan wearing world. But it turns out I don't want to be a pearl girl. So I've watched several YouTube videos on steaking. And I'm confident that if I just rip back, and I already have inserted the needle in here to rip back to the point where I started the garter stitch, where it, where it really started to go wrong. If I go back to that point and I'm gonna put the collar stitches on hold, these here, I'm gonna put these on hold and then I'm gonna cast on a few extras, maybe four extra is what I'm thinking. And then I'm gonna just start working in the round while leaving the collar on hold until I get down to the point where I want to do the purling, the, the ribbing then I'll do the ribbing and then I'll reinforce my steaked stitches, those four extra that I cast on, that I will cast on and then cut it. Then I'll go back and add on the, actually maybe I should do the, the collar before I cut it. I've seen people do that with steaking too. I haven't ever steaked anything before. So I'm going, you know, kind of footloose and fancy free with the plan here. So if you have some experience doing this, chime in, call in and tell us what you think. Cause this could be, I feel like it's a good idea, but I really don't know anything about it because I haven't done it before. And I would rather ask for some advice and get it right the first time. I guess it wouldn't be right the first time because I don't wanna do it the way that the pattern says and I've already gone wrong one time. So let me know what your thoughts are. If you have experience hacking a pattern like this, let me know because this pattern has been, um, for lack of a better word, forsaken because of the purling. And if you're not pearl averse, I think, you know, you will love this pattern because it's very cute. The people that I've seen wearing it um, look very cute. And I really just want a cardigan that I can wear, but, I, I'm not gonna pearl it. I'm not gonna, if I'm gonna finish it, it's gonna be an alternate way. So I'm just charting my own path here. This is also a uh, yarn and whiskey project bag. I realize I don't talk very much about my project bags, but that is the yarn and whiskey one. Um, let me see what other ones I have. Uh, this one is from, so crazy crafter and this was actually what went along with the berries and cream yarn through fiber and color and i don't have any other project bags around right now but those are the two i wanted to talk about so next on my list is a project that i didn't show my last podcast because i hadn't cast it on yet but i had made the swatch so i was ready to go when I had some time after filming my last podcast and you guessed it it's a sorrel sweater <laughs> but 
this is not just a regular sorrel. You know, this isn't the classic sorrel. Now, if you're not a sorrel aficionado, then let me break it down to you. The standard sorrel, the one that I have made three times, that is a fingering mohair pattern. It has positive ease like this one that I have on and it's um, written for fingering weight and mohair together. This is the summer, sorry, eh, eh. this is the spring sorrel, clearly a difference. This is a DK weight pattern that has short sleeves and it has negative ease. So it's worn tight on the body. Let me show you the picture here. Now, don't mind me. I've just spilled a whole bunch of stuff all over this pattern as I've been making it. But this is how it looks. And it is cropped with short sleeves. So I think it's more of a fall type of pattern rather than spring. But, you know, YOLO. The other thing. Oh, no, I've been dropping stitches. Fettle sticks. Okay. Oh, I dropped a lot, y'all. Okay, let me just pick these up. So the Summer Sorrel is a different pattern than this one. The Summer Sorrel is written for fingering weight yarn, and it has a much wider neck, and I don't like that about it. So I haven't made that one, but I have made three of the other Sorrel, the classic Sorrel, and this is my first one of the spring sorrel. But I think I really like this pattern too because it has the negative ease. And I think the way that the uh, dip stitches open up on the front with that negative ease just look better. Uh, I, I love the look that the mohair gives with the classic sorrel. But this has just been such a pleasure to knit first because the mohair is not shedding all over me um and second because i'm using a really premium yarn this yarn that i'm using i did recover all the stitches this yarn that i'm using is a passionate yarn and this is 50 percent merino 50 percent silk and it feels like it it feels like luxury it feels like something a rich auntie would wear and i really don't know if i can go back i i had spoke previously about being in my luxury yarn era and this is the luxury you know the level i'm really going for i'll show you how it looks in my bowl here and tell you the name this is on the fervent base that's what passion it's uh 50 superwash merino wool and 50 percent silk is called the fervent base and this is a color called lantana it's a pink it's it's a overall pink but then it has a lot of tonal variations in the pink and I actually did leave one in the skein to show the good people of the internet because I really like seeing how yarn looks wound up and knit up and in a skein because this is how you buy it. So if you want to buy something that gives the same effect, then this is what you want to be looking for, something that looks like this in the skein. What I love about this is that it has the tiniest, teensiest tiniest little blue speckles and they do you see that one right there do you see it they come up just you know every now and again but it's like oh you know exciting when you get to one of those speckles i'm trying to see you can see this one right here right there right there see that one yeah so I'm about two skeins into this project. It should take three, I have four. So if I don't use all of the yarn, maybe I'll try and make a little sorrel baby hat 
or something like that. I haven't ever made any sorrel baby stuff. So I'm just at the sleeve separation now and I'll probably take this on my trip and finish it while I'm gone. But it is going really fast, especially now that I've turned it inside out and it's all just knitting with the right side facing inside. So the right side is the reverse stockinette side with the dip stitches. So when you actually knit it, you can just turn it inside out. This pattern is also different from the classic sorrel pattern because this doesn't have any short rows. And in the pattern, it actually doesn't tell you to turn it inside out like the last one suggests, you know, you can turn it inside out to not have so much purling. And I'm always looking for a way to get out of purling. So that's what I did. I've been alternating every single row and it was a good idea because just with hand knit yarns, nothing, no two are ever going to be exactly the same. So it's turning out really great and I think this will be excellent to wear and I got it caught all in my cords. I'm going to just put it over here for right now, settle that after. Next on my list of things to talk about is this dream that I have of knitting a 100 color sweater. So let me tell you the background on this. My grandmother, who uh, I love dearly, she is going to turn 99. Sorry, she's going to turn 100 in 93 days. And I've knit lots of things over the years for her. But I think how cool would that be to make a 100 color sweater for her for her 100th birthday? Her birthday is January 2nd. So I have an idea for it. And I was thinking to just do a very plain, uh, like top down sweater, but to use mini skeins and to use a bunch of yarn that I have around already and possibly hold it together. Or I don't know, I'm just trying to think of a concept for this sweater but I want to mention it because I know people out there got a lot of good ideas and yeah I haven't cast anything on or you know set anything to the side but I want to use stuff that I have already because I think in essence that's like who she is is like use what you got to get what you want um, she was a seamstress at the city hospital and she sewed baby clothes and hospital scrubs. And, you know, I mean, this is from another era back when all of those items were provided by employers to employees. They were made in the place where you need them rather than made in some faraway place and shipped there. So she is an expert seamstress she ha taught me to crochet she learned to crochet from her mother so we're actually working on this baby blanket that we're both crocheting together just like trading like on and off i'll do a little bit on it while i'm at her house and she'll do she'll work on it while i'm gone and then i'll work on it a little bit when i go back so that's what we're working on. And I haven't mentioned the sweater to her, but I just think that would be such a cool thing to present to her on her 100th birthday. So let me know if you have some ideas about that or if you think you know a pattern that would be perfect for it or yeah, just let me know what you think. The other next thing I wanna talk about is some books that I finished that I thought were excellent and worth mentioning. Uh, one of them is called The Fortunes of Jaded Women, and I'm going to put how they look here. This was a really great book about mother-daughter relationships, and it was about Vietnamese women making it in America after the Vietnam War and the kind of struggles that Vietnamese people had coming from living in a war zone to coming to America and just starting over from nothing. So... It was an excellent book. I picked it up by chance at a thrift store and I started reading it and I couldn't put it down. So that is a book I would recommend. Another one is Verity by Colleen, Colleen something or other. This book Verity, I was up all night reading this book. Let me tell you. 
that was one that I couldn't put down. Verity. An excellent book by my standards. If you have similar taste to me, then you'll probably like it. But it's a book, it's a, I would say suspense romance. And I never read a book quite like that before, but it was just like a page turner. So, Verity. The other one that I read recently is called The Measure. And this book, I think, changed my life and changed how I think about life. The concept for the book is one day everyone wakes up and there's a box outside of your house and it has a string in it. And the string, they don't know at first what it means, but the string tells you the measure of your life. And as somebody who measures things and uses yarn a lot, I just thought this was a great concept for a plot for a book. So the the strings essentially tell you how long you're going to live. And it takes them a while to figure out that that's what it is. And I'm not going to tell you the whole book because I do want you to read it. It was very good. But the people have to each make a choice about whether or not they're going to open it. And then it becomes a political thing where governments are demanding that people tell what their strings are and the army won't take people who have too short of a string or you know it it is just an excellent concept and the author really took the premise of the book all the way into every sphere of life and just imagined so effortlessly well, I won't say effortlessly but so um convincingly that this was just the new world that everybody's living in is this world where some people know how long they're gonna live some people don't know how long they're gonna live some people will never open the box some people open other people's boxes it just is an excellent uh book so those are three books that I want to recommend uh and that last one definitely was kind of yarny related other things I wrote down is the unraveling podcast so that was a podcast that had actually shared and done the cuddle puddle wrap pattern which is my uh first pattern ever and I'll link that if you would like to see what it looks like and uh possibly knit it yourself it is a a one skein or two skein pattern where you can knit uh assigned pooling colors hey babe hey. how's your run Ooh, it's good it's hot it's hot yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay <laughs> so my cuddle puddle wrap is a sign pooling pattern and if you know what sign pooling is it's essentially where there's a yarn i actually have some yarn here to show what what kind of yarn you need so this is yarn that I'm gonna, that I put aside for the giveaway, but that's gonna, I'm gonna talk more about that in my next podcast. But it's a yarn that is mostly one color and then it has a contrast section to give you a different direction. The pattern that I made is uh, with drop stitches. So you have drop stitches where the contrast is. But the Unraveling podcast had done a make along and I mean, they were really sharing this pattern and they really um helped me to get a lot more eyes on the pattern and I love seeing Knitting Daddy he's the one of the people that does the podcast and it's an audio podcast he was just sharing this like every week multiple times a week and I was just following along with him knitting it and he chose to make a it's mostly like a cream color and then the contrast is a pink i'll i'll share it but i just want to shout them out and say thank you for sharing my pattern for knitting my pattern and uh just for showing love you know in the knitting world there's some nasty people out there and it just is always really nice when you get to interact with people who are just genuinely nice good people so yeah, the Unraveling podcast. Check that out if you are into audio podcasts. The other podcast I want to mention is Felina Knits. And uh, that's 
my friend Felicia who does a knitting podcast on YouTube and uh, I'll link her so that you can follow her but she does a similar style podcast as what I do except she does really hard um projects that take a lot of focus that would be absolutely not fun for me so she <laughs> she does really like complex I will say my projects are com not complex but she just has a different taste than me. And it's nice to watch her because she lives in DC and she's just kind of got like a, a chill vibe, but still witty and funny and nitty. So yeah, check out the Felina Knits podcast if you're looking for a, another podcast. Her podcast is on YouTube. And she also did knit the Cuddle Puddle Wrap and she knitted actually in the same yarn that I used for my sample, the green sample, but she knitted in orange for her mom. And the episode where she does the episode with her mom is so good. So I definitely recommend watching that one and I'll link it. Uh, my spinning. I have been spinning and where is that floof at? Of course, it's never where it's supposed to be when I'm doing the podcast. Huh, it's under my notebook where I see I got my notes and then it was underneath. Okay, so this is a Malabrigo roving braid and I have been knitting on it, not knitting, spinning on it. And you can see how it's going. It's, I think going to be kind of like a fractal spin because it has a lot of, long color stripes kind of as it goes and there's a lot of lights and a lot of darks and color variation and this is the type of spinning dye job that I like because it's never the same anytime you work on it so I've just been pulling a little off and spinning it I'm gonna measure it weigh it today and see how much of this is left so that I can decide when to change my bobbin so that I can do a two ply on it. This roving is chef's kiss. Where did I buy this at? I bought it at a yarn store. And that's one thing, yarn stores, if you're out there, put that tag on, put that tag on. Cause I could be saying, I could be shouting y'all out, promoting y'all. I don't, but I don't remember where I bought it. So I, do recommend getting one of these if you're into spinning because this is a comb top and the way that the fibers just lay together makes it so easy to spin almost effortless so definitely recommend the malabrigo cloud sometimes it's called nube uh cloud in spanish is nube so if you see that that's the same product that's that so i estimate i'm about 25 percent done with that spin now for what I'm going to cast on, my next cast on, I'm going to cast on the Earth and Air sweater by James Watts. And I'm gonna get my yarn. So the Earth and Air sweater by James Watts is a very low yardage size inclusive pattern that uses two color brioche with like a boxy frame and long sleeves you can crop it if you want totally up to you i'm going to use this lola bean targi that i spun this was gifted to me from adela thank you so much girl i'm finally using it and sometimes you just gotta wait for the right project. The yarn telling me what it wants to be, right? So these are more or less the same color, the two yarns that I'm gonna use. And ironically, I didn't choose either of these. So this was sent to me by Adela. And this was a gift from my sweet, sweet husband who went to New York without me and he stopped at, let me tell you, because it's on the label, Nitty City. And he picked up these plume lace baby Surrey alpaca silk from Plucky Knitter. 
and this color is called Meyer May. And the first time that I knit a project with Surrey Silk, I realized that it's like mohair, but better because it doesn't shed the same way that mohair does. So I figured if I use this for the mohair part of the pattern and this for the solid color or for the worsted color, wor worsted, worsted is not a color. If I use this for the worsted weight yarn, then this will be more or less like one tonal pinky project. So that's my plan with this. And I'm gonna wind this up and put it on my, actually I'm gonna run this through my meterage counter first so that I can make sure I have enough because I hand spun this and I don't want to start using this and then realize I'm gonna run out. But I know this is gonna be plenty for that pattern because it's such low yardage. So that is the earth and air sweater by James Watts. I have bought some yarn and I'm about to wrap this up because I gotta go to my aunt's house, like I said, and she's cooking up a storm. So I don't wanna be there. I don't wanna be the last one to get there. So the last thing I'm gonna show you is some yarn that I just got yesterday actually. And it's from the Periwinkle Sheep. And these are the skeins that I bought. So let me start with one first. This one is, this is the Diamant base and it's 80% superwash, 20% silk. And it's a fingering weight um, yarn, but it is 150 grams. It's sold as 150 grams, but I put it on my scale and it's actually 165 grams. So this is super generous. And it was my plan to use one of these to make a new pattern that I'm gonna dream up one day. And my plan to use the other one to make myself a cuddle puddle wrap that I can use and keep for myself for, you know, ever. Because I want to have another one that's more neutral. And I think that it's a beautiful color. The way that this purpley gray and the chartreuse coming through is looking. I saw this from Periwinkle Sheep on Instagram and I just had to get one of these. This is called A Crack in the Sidewalk. And this other one is called Gray Lavender. And there were several others that I also wanted to get, but I said, let me slow my roll. I do have a lot of yarn in my life, so I could only really justify buying two of them. But this is almost like buying three of them because the yardage is so high and it's 165 grams instead of being 150 grams, which is what was advertised. So you're a real one, Periwinkle Sheep. Appreciate you. And this was marked down actually. So the regular price is 49, but they were on sale for 39. So there was just, there was just a lot of things going right with this yarn. It's really soft. It's got that silk in it. And I haven't made a cuddle puddle wrap with any luxury yarn like I was I wasn't yet in my luxury yarn era when I embarked on that journey but now I'm gonna revisit and I'm gonna I'm gonna you know make another one it'll be my fourth one but why not because when you like a pattern don't deprive yourself from knitting it I have knit the same thing so many times and I feel happy when I make things that I like. So make yourself things you like and be happy. That's all the yarn that I bought. I haven't been really buying that much yarn because the way my student loans is kicking in, um, that's a new bill that I'm gonna have to start paying again. So I don't have anything else to show you today, but I do want to say thank you for watching my podcast and please subscribe to my channel if you like this content and I will be back another day, another manicure. So 
I have a new Manny and this is what I said I was going to do was, you know, at least every manicure, I'm going to get a podcast filmed. And I already didn't do that because I did have a manicure that y'all didn't see since the last time that I had recorded the podcast, but I had an ear infection and I had strep. So that had put me out the game for a little bit, but I'm back on the wagon and I'm looking forward to continuing the podcast and doing it every two weeks or so. So yeah, I really appreciate you watching and I will see you in my next episode. Bye.